So um, we're going to talk about um, and try to understand a little bit better this um, idea of symbolic interactionism and the question that um, we are presented with, the question, by what process does society come into being? Um, this idea, symbolic interactionism, seems like kind of a, um, well, like any philosophical idea is based in, you know, influenced by ideas before it, and the main maybe person that we're going to talk about is George Herbert Mead. He taught philosophy at the University of Chicago from 1894 to 1931. Um, he was, had kind of an oral tradition that was accumulated and re recorded or collected by his students. And then he made this book, um, Mind, Self, and Society, from the standpoint of a social behaviorist. So we're going to talk about his ideas a little bit. Also the roots um, of Mead's discourse, very briefly. Um, so those the roots are the philosophy of pragmatism and um, psychological behaviorism. So the important parts of pragmatism that we need to understand are, um, I'll just narrow it down to one sentence. Um, among other things, the important thing to know is um, that, let's see here, people define reality actively. So it seems like a simple idea, but that is an important factor in the um, philosophy of pragmatism. So. Um, Mead was influenced by lots of different people. He had to kind of reconcile ideas. Like any um, person creating a, a social criticism or philosophy. But um, I won't go over those things in detail because um, there isn't really enough time. But um, one thing that the author of this article talked about, some important kind of aspects of symbolic interactionism are that the world and the actor or human being um, interact. So they're in a relationship, this dialectical relationship. Um, also, that the view of the world and the actor are dynamic and related. They're not static. Um, so they, you know, help manipulate each other, change each other. Um, the act and also, thirdly, the actor's ability to interpret the social world is important and significant. So that is what we'll talk about distinguishes maybe a human and an animal. Um, we interpret the social world, we critically think about the things that we do in, in it. We don't just react to stimuli. Okay, so Mead was of course influenced by several theorists before him and had to recognize some of those theories, like I said just a moment ago. Um, for example, he had to um, reconcile his own idea and the idea of the radical behaviorists. They were um, not interested in giving credit um, to the, quote, covert mental processes that, that occur between the time that a stimulus was applied and a response emitted. So they don't really give much credit to that human, to the human mind in that situation. It's just that humans are like animals. They just react to stimuli. But Mead believed that there was indeed covert behavior, something happening between the stimulus and the response. He called this the act. Um, animals are capable of this act, um, but the key difference is that human can use language between stimulus and response in order to decide how, re how to respond. How to respond. Um, animals don't use that same system. They might use a type of language, but not a symbolic um, gesture, which we'll talk about in a second. So how does a human decide to, um, how to respond um, with that language that they have? Um, Mead emphasizes that behavior was just a small part of the broader, broader social world. So the way a human decides how to react is also is manipulated by his interaction with other human beings or in, influenced by his society. Um, it's kind of difficult to answer this question a little bit because it seems like it's just, it's kind of hard for me to comprehend, but we'll work this out together. Um, me and the camera, I guess. Let's see here. Uh, me, myself, and I. Let's see. So the actor um, is not just a puppet, as a radical behaviorist would think. Um, the actor's stimulus is not eliciting an automatic, this is quote from the article, is not eliciting an automatic unthinking response from the human actor 
but is an occasion or opportunity for the act, not as a compulsion or mandate. Um, so Mead talks about four stages that are dialect dialectically interrelated in the act um, that cause for this kind of pause between the stimulus being presented to the individual and the act. So this is impulse, um, perception, manipulation, and consummation. So this act is performed by gestures, vocal, physical, etc., and what he calls a significant symbol um, is a gesture that makes the actor um, react similarly or the same as the person to which the gesture is made. That's what defines this like uh, significant symbol, as if like when the actor does the symbol, it has meaning for the person that it's being acted upon. So if there isn't this like mutual meaning being communicated, then um, meaning just doesn't exist. So without this mutual kind of understanding of meaning, it's just sort of in vain, this communication. Um, so people by, so by people interacting, meaning is produced or really kind of affirmed is how I read it. It doesn't happen in the mind of an individual, but within the interaction of a group. I hope that's kind of answering the question at hand. So thus, uh, this is kind of a quote from the article. The mind can be distinguished by its ability to respond to the overall community and put forth an organized response. If people didn't react or it doesn't re elicit a react to this act or whatever, sorry, this is kind of confusing, but a reaction um, or gesture doesn't really have meaning then, does it? I guess that's the question that I was thinking in response to this reading, and I think that's pretty much the idea of this article. Thank you.